My name is Daniela Klaus. I'm the General Secretary of Press Club, Vienna, uh, Press Club Concordia in Vienna. I am an, in Vienna, uh, but as usually, usually in our European context talks, our speakers and audience is from all over the world because Miliana Tomic, good morning, Miliana. Good morning. Who is, good morning, who is also in this series of talks, um, connects East and West and North and South. And we also we do have a rehearsal of how to pronounce the speaker's name names every day, every morning before we start our talks. This series of talks, it's always about the context and it's a cooperation between um, Erste Stiftung Europe's Futures. Um, Europe's Futures is a program that is led by Ivan Weybuda. Good morning, Ivan. Nice to Good see morning. you. Good morning. Um, and it's, uh, it's located at the IWM Institute for Human Sciences here in Vienna. Uh, another cooperation partner is Fium Forum for Journalism and Media in Vienna and Press Club uh, Concordia. Today we are talking about Finland uh, and the elections on Sunday. Recently, I read that the Finns understand the Russians. They are one of the countries that understand the Russians. So uh, we will also talk about the Russo-Ukrainian Russo war. And um, I'm particularly interested to learn about uh, how the elections might be influenced and might also be influenced by social media and by TikTok. I'm, I'm very curious about this talk today. Um, as usual, we will have um, a conversation between Miriana and our speakers, which I welcome uh, very much at this point. Hello. Uh, Miriana will introduce you shortly. Uh, and it will be followed by a Q&A uh, session uh, in which, of course, you can again participate. Please, before you participate, turn off your camera and your microphone. I think that's everything from my side. And I hand over to Ivan. Ivan, please, uh, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Daniela. I think you more or less said everything on the behalf of the Institute for Human Sciences and the Europe's Futures Program. I would just like to emphasize that our cooperation with all the institutions mentioned has been extremely fruitful. And I look forward to this discussion on Finland, the Finnish elections, and of course, of the fallout of the Russian invasion uh, on Ukraine. Uh, we saw that just yesterday, the day before, the Hungarian parliament gave a green light for Finland's accession to NATO. Much to talk about there. So uh, in the short hour that we have, I'll simply pass on the, the floor to Miriana. Thank you very much, Daniela and Ivan. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, first of all, good morning to Vera Uniro, our speakers, and uh, good morning to all the participants uh, throughout Europe. Uh, today's European context talk will focus on understanding the political and security context that surround the elections in Finland that are, uh, that are taking place on Sunday and uh, for the 200 seats in the Finnish parliament. In fact, the election process has started already. And by today, it is estimated that about 30% of the people have uh, already cast uh, uh, their vote. Uh, as all our events, the emphasis is on understanding the local context with speakers who live in the country they talk about. Finland is an interesting country in many uh, aspects for Finns from one point of view, for us foreigners from another point of view. And uh, I guess the international perspective is not always the same as um, the Finnish perspective. Uh, the country was recently ranked as the happiest country in the world. Um, I don't know about these rankings, but I saw that Austria was ranked 11th. And uh, when you go in the streets in Vienna, people uh, complain all the time as if this were a non-functioning city. So I don't know where they found all this happiness in Vienna. And on the most comprehensive, uh, Finland is uh, known for the most comprehensive media literacy schemes for being highly te uh, technological and still TikTok campaign uh, of the far right Finns party seemed to have enormous influence on the young voters. Finland uh, uh, was considered a neutral country, although it did, depend on its, uh, it did abandon its neutrality in the 90s. 
And uh, now it is abandoning its military neutrality, not to mention that uh, Finland started building a fence at the border with Russia, something that all of us ridiculed when former US President uh, Trump uh, promised to do on, the, on his southern border. Now Europe is uh, building lots of fences. Uh, Finland also boasts one of the most successful education systems, according to different PISA reports. Many reasons to be happy, but the war is raging in the neighborhood. Uh, it is also interesting that for the first time, ILE, I am not sure if I pronounce it correctly, it's the public broadcaster, will arrange election discussions in uh, different languages, in addition to Finnish and Swedish. The languages in question are Arabic, English, Somali, and Russian, because these are the uh, the, uh, the non uh, indigenous, how should I say, languages uh, spoken in Finland. Our first speaker is Vera Loma Aho. She's a journalist, head of Department of Politics, Business and Economy at Helsinki Sinomat. It is the largest new subscription newspaper in Finland and in Nordic countries. And she will give us the context of what, it, what are the elections about from the Finnish perspective. It is also interesting to remember that most Finnish parties are led by women, but at the same time, misogynist attacks on in, online have not stopped in spite of the fact that, uh, that there is, a, you know, there is a high presence of uh, women. So Vera, would you, uh, shall we start? What are the most important issues that are, that are, that are, that Finns are debating and to what extent the war in Ukraine affects the, uh, the elections, although with Iran, we should be speaking about the security as such. Uh, Vera, please. Okay. Hey, thank you very much for uh, uh, inviting me. Uh, I'm, I'm Vera Luomaho, uh, head of, of Department of Politics and uh, Business and Economy at Helsingin Sanomat. And uh, I actually started in this position only uh, four months ago, so this is also a uh, first election for me in this this job so exciting months for me as well and uh these have been extremely interesting months uh the situation in these elections is very very exciting i mean we can't even remember last time when when it has been this exciting no one really knows when you say the last polls uh, uh who is is uh going to to win i mean the three biggest parties are are uh it's, it's possible that that uh, any any one of them can can win this this election, uh, and um, well, what do voters care about? Can I just start now? Of course, okay. yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> and get, uh, first, I just talk generally, and then I have uh, slides about uh, Finnish political uh, parties uh, to to uh, give you some background. Uh, Okay, well, it has been, of course, uh, a very unusual term for this government, uh, like everywhere uh, uh, else uh, in the world. Uh, the government was uh, forced to deal with the coronavirus pandemic, and, and just when we thought that uh, it is over, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. So, as you probably all know, uh, uh, public opinion public opinion in Finland changed almost overnight and uh, years of military non-alignment were over and Finland applied for uh, NATO membership. And uh, also because of the war and economical sanctions, inflation has been high as, as uh, it has been everywhere in Europe. So it has been impacting the cost of living in, in Finland. Uh, uh, like everywhere else in, in Europe as well. And so uh, when the first question was, what do uh, voters care about? I would say that in these elections, voters care about their own wallet. Uh, of course, uh, uh, so this is this election has been uh, about economy and, uh, well, own wallet, own money, but uh, of course also government debts and uh, energy politics. Uh, and it has been really interesting that uh, these issues in these uh, elections, they ha have been quite traditional uh, left-right issues. Uh, there hasn't really been um, debate between liberal and conservative values that much or, or identity politics. It has been, you know, quite, quite traditional left-right 
uh, deep, uh, write a debate about economy and structures of society and these kind of things. Uh, there has been some conversation about schools and, and how parents uh, worry about school, Finnish school system getting more unequal. And, and there has been some concern about street gangs, but they haven't, I mean, they haven't really been that big issues. I mean, some, some, some conversation, but it, it, really, it really hasn't been that big. Uh, okay, then uh, I can probably share my, my slides, wait a minute. So uh, this is uh, Petteri Orpo, uh, the leader of National Coalition Party. And uh, uh, they are uh, just now in polls the most popular party, but the margin is very, very thin. So, so it's, uh, it, it must be a really, really nerve wracking situation for them. Uh, National uh, Coalition Party is a center right economically liberal party. Uh, they have both uh, socially conservative and uh, liberal wings. And uh, uh, their strengths are that, well, they are a clear uh, alternative to government's uh, economic policy. I mean, they want to cut uh, social security and business subsidies, and they want a reduction in income taxation. And uh, uh, one strength is also that their uh, security politics is really, uh, it's credible because party has long supported uh, Finland's NATO membership which now uh, has a strong support among, among voters. And they have also like really great list of candidates, probably because they are front runners. They have attracted like very prominent figures from Finnish society. And uh, they have uh, uh, really skillful uh, party organization. They are very organized. Uh, their weaknesses are that uh, Petteri Orpo has but like many voters may think that he has like a pleasant personality, but he has also been maybe uh, uh, quite uh, weak in public debates, like uh, Riikka Purra from uh, Finns party, uh, formerly uh, True Finns, nowadays they call themselves uh, Finns party, and Sanna Marin, prime minister, uh, head of, uh, leader of social democrats, they dominate debates and, and, and most of the uh, voters think that they maybe argue more clearly. Uh, and uh, Orpo has to also defend uh, his pending cuts against left-wing parties, which is maybe, it can be a difficult situation for him that he has to defend their, their cuts. And uh, their favorite election themes are economic policy and foreign and security uh, policy. But interesting observation is that uh, Sanna Marin, uh, uh, who is from Social Democratic Party that used to be against NATO, but is now, she is now very much pro-NATO, she appears to be uh, suddenly more tough on Russia, Russia and, and she's supporting Ukraine even you know, more fiercely. So this is suddenly like a totally new position for a national coalition party, even though they have been actually uh, supporting uh, NATO membership for a long time. But uh, things have changed so, so fast. Uh, well, usually all the, Fini all the uh, journalists from other countries, when they ask questions, uh, I was surprised. I, I'm not surprised because usually all the questions are about Sanna Marin. Uh, the Prime Minister of Finland, leader of uh, Social Democratic Party. Uh, Social Democrats, as uh, everywhere in the world, well, it's like a center-left party with, uh, in, in Finland with a strong connection to Finland's uh, trade unions. Uh, strengths of Social Democratic Party, well, definitely Sanna Marin's uh, super stardom. Well, she is also a superstar in Finland. She's very, very popular. Uh, she is great on debates, and uh, the, this uh, government led Finland through the corona pandemic and the NATO process, and voters are, are quite happy with that. And, uh, and uh, Mar Marin's message in these elections is that voting social democrats is the best way to prevent uh, government of uh, national uh, 
coalition party and, 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 and Finns uh, party. Uh, weaknesses are that you know economic policy really dominates these election debates and, 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 and in social democrats program there are not almost any like significant spending cuts and uh, uh, maybe their economical program is not credible for some voters but uh, and, and, and for some voters even though Sanna Marin is really strong on debates maybe some voters uh, may think that she's even too ag ag aggressive. Uh, their favorite election themes are social and healthcare and education. And, and, and the, my uh, interesting observation here is that, that uh, Marine's uh, economical policy and, and, and her arguments on the debates, they have been surprisingly left, left wing. Like, she doesn't even try to attract voters from the middle. She probably tries to inspire uh, uh, her own <laughs> own voters, not really trying to attract uh, voters from the from the middle, and it has been it has been quite surprising. I mean, I I I would have thought that she would would have done it a bit differently, but uh, I mean, we will see what's going to happen. Uh, this is uh, Riikka Purra from the Finns party, leader of the Finns party, and. Uh, uh, the Finns party is right-wing Eurosceptic party that is opposed to immigration. And, uh, well, strength is that it kind of stands out um, still, like from other parties, like it has like alternative uh, attitude or, or something like that, if that's their brand. A uh, uh, party would cut immigration. It's uh, uh, and uh, development aid, and they have negative attitude towards EU, and, and in the long run, they want Finland to exit from the EU. Uh, well, weaknesses are that, well, uh, they talk about immigration so much that party really doesn't have very many other economical views uh, or, or views. Uh, and uh, so the success of, of, of uh, Finns party is, I mean, it depends uh, what kind of topics are dominating public debate. And, 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 and for some voters, uh, I mean, Purra style is, is maybe too, too aggressive. Now, interesting thing here is that uh, 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 the Finns party is really popular among young voters. They, I mean, it's very popular uh, uh, among young people from Helsinki and Helsinki has traditionally been really liberal, liberal city. But, uh, but uh, I think in Helsinki suburbs, for example, Finns party is doing well. They are now popular among women as well because it used to be popular among men but now also young women are voting for or, or saying that they're going to vote for Finns party and, and and maybe one reason for that is that they are really uh uh they have really strong presence in TikTok like compared to any other parties they are they are uh they have many followers and 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 many of of, of their their candidates are really, really uh, doing well, well there. Uh, and TikTok is not a very familiar platform for, uh, well, um, it's uh, like for middle-aged people even, I mean, uh, it's, it's and, and for journalists, I mean, journalists don't really know TikTok that well. So there can be like surprises for me as well, because I can't really see the quiet signals if, you know, TikTok is not really that familiar for me. Uh, and then uh, smaller parties, uh, there is the center party, the Greens, the Left Alliance, uh, center party is a centrist party. Uh, it has always been popular uh, in the countryside and, and and it has its liberal and traditional 
traditionalist wings and it's really su uh, su suffering from lack of support. Uh, uh, Annika Saarikko is, 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 is widely respected leader of the Central Party and, 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 and she is great on debates, which is maybe, uh, I mean, it actually makes party situation even more depressing if they can't do any better, even though they have a, have a popular uh, leader. And, uh, and the rise in the cost of living in the countryside and the rural areas, it really makes their supporters very angry. Greens are really uh, and are not doing uh, well at all. Uh, Maria Ohisalo, their leader, uh, she is a, a well-educated, smart person, uh, but uh, she has really difficulties getting her message heard. She's totally overshadowed by by, by Sanna Marin and uh, Lee Anderson, who is uh, left, uh, leader of uh, the Left Alliance, and and, and also this green alternative liberal themes uh we we haven't really heard those in public discussion in these elections because it has been more like left right wing uh debate and then there is left alliance uh, leader lee anderson uh she 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 is also like a popular leader she hasn't failed in this in debates at all but uh it's probably just difficult for the party to get more support or new new voters behind it. Thank you very much, Vera. I think the time is, uh, it seems to me that in Finland, the politics is a women's affair. Uh, so that's why we have women speakers that we are uh, mainstream when it comes to uh, political thinking in uh, Finland. Uh, I just want to make sure we have time for questions. Thank you very much. And uh, Iro, uh, would you like to explain to us this sudden change uh, of attitude towards NATO, towards Russia? And uh, I understand that security issue is not part of the electoral campaign, that there is a, a, an agreement. Uh, how would you, uh, uh, could you give us the context of security about 10 minutes or I'll ask you questions. Please okay. go ahead. Yes, uh, first of all, I think security is always part of electoral debates, but I think we have such a wide consensus at the moment that it's not really debated that much. I think that's the that's the difference to previous elections. And uh, like Vera just pointed out, we have quite a few bigger societal issues where there is this consensus. So therefore, I think those issues are really dominating the political debate at the moment. Uh, but there is a very wide consensus um, amongst the political parties that, yes, Finland uh, you know, will join NATO. We just had the NATO vote um, at the parliament uh, a few weeks ago. Our president ratified uh, the law uh, uh, last week. So, so that's, that's not really an issue to be debated. And I think the time is not quite ripe yet for that deb debate that what kind of NATO country will Finland be? Although the question is out there, but I think we just first have to get into the alliance. And I think that's the kind of next step to fulfill. And after that, um, this debate will definitely start when the new um, you know, MPs will, will be in power. But you also asked uh, what um, reasons or what really explains why there was such a you know sudden turnaround in the Finnish public opinion. Well, I think the first and first and foremost, the most important reason is that um, uh, Russia's brutal attack on Ukraine and that um, really um, kind of triggered um, a series of events uh, in Finland amongst the Finnish population uh, to ask for NATO membership. Uh, I think initially in the first few weeks of the of the war, there was cer certainly, in my opinion, also fear amongst the Finnish population. I mean, just looking at what happened, what happened to Ukraine, it was kind of like history repeating itself uh, uh, for the Finns. We saw what ha was happening to the Ukrainians that kind of happened to us uh, during the, the Second World War and the, uh, the Winter War in uh, 1939 and 1940. Um, so the Finns really, it was the Finns, the people who started to demand for a change. And um, the second reason uh, why, or the reason why Finland hasn't really applied for NATO membership is because of maybe, because of the reactions of the Russian reactions, we thought what would happen, but also, um, you know, that the public didn't support uh, membership in NATO. And if you look at the polls uh, over the past 30, uh, sorry, 20 years, 
already, we can see that only about 25% of the Finns actually uh, supported uh, NATO membership. I mean, there's been, you know, some changes over the years, but that's about uh, 25%. And very quickly after, you know, uh, the invasion in Ukraine started, uh, the polls even doubled and we had something like 50, over 50% 50 within a few weeks uh, uh, of the, you know, respondents replying that, yes, they would like Finland to join NATO. And so it was over 60. In May, it was over 70. And Helsinki and Sanawat, uh, uh, where Vera Works, um, you know, conducted a poll, I think it was in June, and it was about 80%. So there was a very, very strong, um, you know, public support for that. And that really, uh, you know, uh, gave kind of um, the, how would I say, um, the, the, you know, the power for the politicians to, to act upon it and and to know that the public was um, you know supporting uh, this issue. Um, there are also I mean other reasons maybe why Finland didn't join earlier and I think um, we were interoperable already uh, over the years you know that interoperability with NATO developed but maybe the alliance was also going to a direction that the Finns didn't see themselves you know dealing with saying that, you know, NATO um, was leading a number of overseas uh, expeditions. And um, in Finland, where there's been a very strong tradition on territorial defense in our defense concept, as well as the general conscription, that didn't really, that wasn't really the ideal, you know, <laughs> formula for these like uh, NATO's overseas um, operations. But I, I would say it's primarily Russia and the public support are these two reasons why, uh, why the the discussion really didn't spark off uh, earlier. I mean, obviously, uh, you could look um, into year 2014 and think why it didn't take off back then. I mean, why uh, didn't we have such a wide debate back then? And um, I think um, you really have to understand that Finland, as a small country, even though we strongly, you know, joined the EU sanctions against Russia already back then, there wasn't really. Um, you know, such a strong reaction uh, from the part of the Western allies against Russia, even though there were the economic sanctions that, um, you know, Finland couldn't really take kind of like a leading role in that. And um, uh, it just seemed that the rest of the Western world maybe didn't push that hard against Russia back then. So, um, so many reasons. But yes, there could have been a momentum already back in 2014, for instance, to uh, to kind of initiate this debate. But back then we also had um, political leadership, um, you know, um, I wouldn't say back then it was very skeptical, but more I would say conservative um, towards NATO issue. We had something called uh, the NATO option in our security and defense policy, which meant that in case, um, you know, the security situation would deteriorate very badly uh, around Finland's surrounding environment, we would activate it. So we didn't, uh, we kind of retained the option of, of applying uh, for NATO membership if the situation uh, came to worse. And now um, when it happened, you know, last spring that things really started moving very quickly, that's how we did it. We activated the NATO option. One could obviously question, well, you know, was there a bit of good luck as well in Finland's uh, case to activate this option because uh, the circumstances uh, in Ukraine could have been somewhat different. And if the, you know, if Russia would have conquered Kiev uh, easily, then one could uh, ask, you know, whether uh, the Western powers would have supported Finland's and Sweden's applications to, to the same extent as they did uh, last spring. So, yeah, um, this kind of short um, introduction, I'm trying to answer your questions, but uh... we can continue from this. Uh, I have a couple of questions, but please, I, I also want the audience to either raise their hand and I'll give them a live entrance or <laughs> write in the chat. I have a question. Uh, are, uh, are Finns scared that Russia would invade Finland? As simple as that. At the moment? Yes. I don't think so. No. And um, why is this? It's because, uh, well, first of all, I think there's a very kind of... Um, we're very resilient people and we learned to deal with Russians already over the Cold War years uh, or the USSR and, and post Cold War. And we had good relations with them um, in the past. And uh, we know that, you know, we have our robust national defense 
and capabilities that were really well looked after during the post-Cold War years as well. And, and now we just want to have kind of maybe a reassurance to make sure that we will maximize our national security. So I don't think there is a sense of uh, fear or chaos amongst the Finnish population. I think, uh, you know, I don't know if Vera agrees on, with me on this, but, but I think, um, you know, we kind of learn to deal with crisis and uh, um, I think th things are going really smoothly in the society. I, I can't sense any kind of sense of fear or hesitation. No, I, 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 I agree. I don't think that Finnish people think that Russia is going to invade Finland. No, I think people maybe expect that Russia is going to bully or harass uh, Finland a little bit, little bit, like do something. But uh, like, no, it, no, no one is, is really afraid, afraid or scared. Uh, uh, just one question before I give the uh, word to Blanca Blay. Um, the, uh, what about uh, uh, the current prime minister, Sanna Marin, offering jets to uh, to Ukraine, and then it turns out that uh, she may not uh, give these jets, or that uh, could you just give us this? Uh, because the feeling is that uh, Finland is at the forefront of uh, this uh, uh, struggle, or how should I put it, together with Poland and the Baltic countries. So I'm just wondering, what, uh, can you just give us a little bit, uh, very shortly, the context of offering jets, but then returning home and say, well, well, wait a second, what did you offer? Uh, which one of you would like to ask? Maybe Iro. I was hoping maybe Vera. <laughs> but but okay, I'll uh, I try to contextualize. I think, um, well, the, the question came up in the press, uh, you know, in the press, uh, uh, questions when or they had the you know press event after the meeting uh, with President Selesny and uh, uh, I think in Finland it hadn't been debated at least publicly you know the the jet question of how we could utilize hornets um, the fighters um, you know elsewhere than in um, in Finland and I think that's why at, at least in the national debate it or the discussion it had it did come as somewhat uh, as a surprise, um, you know, to also other politicians and and like the president that you know we haven't haven't had such a discussion um, in Finland yet. And also, there's a practical thing. I think what Sanna Marin, um, in my view, is offering here is is like a kind of idealistic vision of how we could ideally help Ukraine, which is a different uh, to what the reality is in many countries such as Finland. I mean, we are not in any position to give those fighter jets in next, in next to two to three years because we are still using them for our own national defense. And we certainly cannot have a gap in our national defense capability. And now what Ukraine is obviously hoping for is as much you know, uh, support and equipment from all the NATO allies and partners uh, to help Ukraine. And um, maybe I think the, the kind of conclusion that was drawn from that uh, press event was that she said she kind of opened the debate saying yes, uh, but then when she came back home, you know, we realized that there's no really, um, you know, tangible, um, you know, way to do that uh, in the next few years. And that kind of took the credibility of her, uh, you know, arguments away. It's a different discussion, I, in my view, to say whether, hypothetically speaking, would we be willing to do that? And I think in that she is correct, saying that you know we should be open for that kind of discussion. Uh, that you know, hypothetically, uh, should we use you know uh, fighter jets and fighter planes in Ukraine's air defense? But that's a different question than whether individual individual NATO member states and how they could contribute to that. Yeah, I think interesting, interesting. Thank you very much. Just a second. I, I have to, uh, the uh, uh, there are questions for both of you. Uh, Bla uh, uh, there are four questions. So uh, Blanca Bly, uh, you can, uh, you know, turn on the camera and introduce yourself. And, the, and then there are three other questions I'll read. And uh, please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. My name is Bianca Bly from the Austrian newspaper, Der Standard. And Vera, you said that the biggest three parties are together like a very thin margin and that um like who will decide the election which voter 
um, part, which voting group will decide the election? Will it be the youngs? Will it be the young women? Will it be like who will decide at the end who will win? Thank you very much. I shall read the other questions and then uh, you'll distribute uh, 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 the, uh, the replies. Um, so there is, uh, uh, sorry, I'm not um, there. Uh, Irene Thierjung, I have a question to Vera. You mentioned the street gangs were also discussed uh, in the election campaign. Is this a growing problem? Thank you. So second qu uh, question for you, Vera. Uh, then there is a question uh, from Andreas Stangl, APA, or Austrian News Agency. Could I, could I maybe when, one, answer that first question first? Because then I won't remember the other questions or... Okay. Is it okay? Okay. So uh, who are important voters? Bianca, you, you asked, well, uh, the biggest uh, uh, AIDS group or, or the group is who is actually voting. People who are actually voting are uh, people from 50, uh, AIDS group 55 to 72. So like older voters are, they always really, they always vote. So they are actually a really, really important uh, a voter group. But I would look at uh, big uh, uh, big cities and suburbs of big cities, like what what is what is happening there, and also really like uh, important areas in Finland are the areas between uh, cities and rural areas, like small towns uh, that are not really countryside or that are not really cities, because those are areas where where interesting things are happening just now. Well. That's maybe uh, uh, one one answer, and and unfortunately, young voters are not voting that much. So so uh, so I, I mean, they are maybe not uh, the group that is really making the difference because they are not as active voters as old, older people are. And and the other question was, or the second question was, on street gangs. Street gangs. Mm, well, if you if you look at statistics, uh, it's not really a big problem yet. I mean, ninety percent percent of Finnish young people do uh, are doing uh, are making less crimes than ever. Mm, but there is a polarization. Uh, Ten percent of Finnish uh, young uh, young people, teenagers, are do, uh, making more crimes and more serious crimes. And you can see it's, it's more about quiet signals that that you can see. Like uh, it's the, uh, we have seen that it has been a problem in Sweden, and 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 you can see quiet signals about that. But you you couldn't really say that it's a serious problem in Helsinki yet. But it's a thing that uh, voters want to take seriously because they are worried that uh, same kind of things are happening in in, in Helsinki. Uh, that that have happened in, in, in Sweden before. Well, I have a third question for you, and uh, I will probably not be able to pronounce one, uh, one word. Uh, and it is from the Austrian Press Agency. Are there any signs that some Peruso Malaset is party? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, I think it's the Finn party. Uh, have underlying sympathies for Putin's policy or some other far right parties in Europe have, uh, that some par uh, far right parties in Europe have shown. So basically, the relationship between Finns or former true Finns and uh, Russia. Mm, there, there is some, but uh, there are also like uh, uh, members of parliament uh, from from Finns party that are really fiercely supporting Ukraine and really tough on Russia. I think that uh, there is uh, such a consensus in Finnish foreign, foreign politics that it would be totally a uh, bad idea for, for Finns party to, to show em em empathy towards Russia. But there are some smaller right-wing parties that definitely, uh, that are more, uh, uh, that are the show signs of, of supporting Russia, but I think in, in that it, in Finland it's really marginal uh, thing. Thank I don't you know what you think, uh, uh, Would you like to add something, Ero? No. Okay. The next question is: What about uh, possible coalitions from Georg Krausenberg? I'm afraid, Vera, you will have to answer that one as well. <laughs> 
that's a really, really good question. Uh, well, uh, we have this uh, situation that uh, Social, democ uh, social Democrats and Greens and Left Alliance won't go the same government with Finns party and then uh, leader of center party has said that uh, they are not going to join the current coalition anymore, which means that then we have to, there has to be a government where at least national coalition party is. So we have basically two options so-called red-blue coalition with uh, Social Democrats and National Coalition Party or a coalition of National Coalition Party and Finns Party. And we will have uh, extremely difficult negotiations because for smaller parties, it's it will be a really, really difficult uh, decision. What do you think will be the most difficult issues in negotiations? Mm, economy. If if it's red blue coalition, it's really difficult for them to to find. Uh, I mean, their their economical views are just now so different. Uh, if if uh, your national coalition party wants uh, huge spending cuts and balance the economy, and and social democratic party not that much or not, not at all. Uh, it's it's a huge difference, and then if National Coalition Party and Finns Party try try to form the government together, for example, well, well National Coalition Party uh, has quite liberal views, and uh, they, for example, are very much pro immigration. Uh, we need uh, they need, think that we need labor uh, people to work uh, in Finland and Finns party is also like against peop, uh, that kind of immigration or they are they, so that will be for example a really difficult discussion if they try to form a government together. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or I have one question that uh, ne uh, neither of you has mentioned, but uh, I invite the audience to ask before I I'm sure even has one, you know, uh, have all these women who lead parties done anything for women? Uh, is anything uh, are policies that have to do uh, do with uh, women and equality? Are they part of the campaign or the debate or the society is so equal and women are at the top that uh, there is no more discussion? <laughs> Who would like to uh, reply to that? And then I have one question in the and the, and also there is one question from the colleague in Slovakia. Uh, hi everyone, Pavel Strva from Actuali Slovakia. How far? How far right is the Finnish far right if you can compare it to other similar European parties such as Le Pen, the Sweden Democrats, or even Viktor Orban? There are obviously many shades of gray, or uh, in this case, shades of brown when it comes to European far right. Uh, I'm also asking because Slovakia is the only EU country with extremists sitting in the parliament, the truly neo Nazis. How extreme is the Finnish extreme, and what it would be mean for uh, what would it mean uh, for the EU if they govern? Uh, so, uh, who would like to reply to that one, and who would reply to uh, who would like to reply about women? Uh, which one wants to start? You okay, know, I, like I can I can try and do both. Uh, I start with the extreme right wing. My perception is that our true Finns are not anywhere close to the extreme right wing in Europe, and um, I mean, if you compare to, for instance, I was looking at the France's electoral campaigns last spring. I mean, definitely far less right, the true Finns, than in France Le Pen's, for instance. And when it comes to foreign policy, I mean, uh, I think the common dominator might be kind of Euroscepticism. This is this is it. But for instance, like uh, Vera just said previously about Russia, I mean, uh, definitely uh, wouldn't they they would be expelling you know voters if if they started to go on a pro uh, russian stance um so um for as when it comes to the um, uh you know sweden maybe vera you can comment on that how close are we to the swedish counterparts but uh we also have like vera said some very small uh 
right-wing parties, but they are not the ones that figure, you know, uh, really in Finnish politics, um, you know, they don't even have a seat uh, at the Finnish parliament currently. And as it seems, according to the polls, that will not happen again. So, so yeah, uh, for women, I, I actually paid attention to that as well. I was watching one of the debates thinking, gosh, you know, men are in minority <laughs> it's uh, women that are you know ruling here as when it comes to politics and that has actually changed uh, fairly quickly when you think about that you know within the past 10 years that we have now majority of women we started to have first women um you know stronger women you know in in politics like as in prime ministerial position um already in the early 2000s and also we had the first female president for 12 years um but really, it's been now over the past, let's say, maybe five years that, you know, really men are in minority. And I think that might actually have effect on the election result as well. I think some men might be a little bit fed up <laughs> with like really kind of this uh, female led uh, politics. And um, I think you better showed a really good picture from the debate in your first slide when Rika Pura and Sanna Marin were really attacking each other like two tigers, you know? And and Petri Orpo was there on the side kind of looking at, and, you know, at what's happening here. And um, um, yeah, I think we will probably find like, kind of like a counterbalance to this. Uh, and, um, but I think the Finns at the end of the day, I don't think they really think it as a gender issue. Uh, you know, it's more of thinking, you know, about the political party, because that's how our system works. It's not as much as you vote for the candidate, you vote for the political party. And it's not a question of gender then who is leading the party. It's, uh, you know, whether people think that that party promotes uh, the values and ideals that are important uh, for those voters. So, yeah. Uh, unless Vera wants to add, I just have a very short follow-up question. Is it the case in Finland, like for example, it is, I think, in some other Nordic countries that women are present in politics, but not so present at the top in business? Uh, yeah, well, that's actually true. Like uh, there is segregation in, in Finnish education system, which is uh, a really interesting thing that uh, women uh, don't study engineering uh and uh it's the whole uh working uh working life is, is is quite segregated so so that is is true i mean situation is much worse than in uh, great britain and, and the us uh for example what, what comes but to then business. on the other hand i i'd like to challenge this because we also have when it comes to family leaves and so forth i mean men have more equal opportunities in finland than in many countries and i think uh how the whole you know system works our taxation system for instance works it really promotes uh women to go back to the you know job front as quickly as possible we have also subsidized uh, government subsidized health uh sorry child care uh you know when it comes to kindergarten so you know the step to go back to working life is not as huge as it is in many um, other european countries such as the uk for instance you know where some uh, families can't afford to send their children to uh, kindergarten because it's too expensive but uh, uh, i was actually comparing like the amount of ceos okay and, okay and, i was and, okay and level yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah but uh, vera would you like to add something about about the Finnish far right in comparison to other far rights in Europe, or uh, well, uh, I I did I, see I, I, uh, some racist posters the, uh, in the campaign. Well, I I'm, I think that researchers maybe can comp compare uh, Finnish parties to other European parties better than uh, than I can. But uh, what I know is that Sverige Demokraterna, Swedish uh, uh, Populist Party, and uh, and Finns Party are cooperating nowadays a lot. So they at least uh, want to be uh, uh, same kind of of of, of uh, Finns Party wants to be the same kind of party than uh, Sverige Demokraterna is. That's that's my. Uh, uh, Point, but uh, I, I can't really compare the party to European uh, populist parties because I don't know them well enough. 
How racist is uh, Finn's party? Mm, that... Are there any red lines or everything is now acceptable? <laughs> well, they don't, they are not openly racist. They quite, I mean, it's not common that they say something openly racist anymore. So uh, uh, their rhetoric has changed. But of course, it's a matter. I mean, what what's the definition of ra racism? Uh, it's 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 really difficult to say how racist how racist they are. But uh, they they have changed they have changed their rhetorics at least. Uh, well, uh, uh, without uh, without defining what is racist, I assisted uh, two years ago at a seminar in Denmark on immigration from the Nordic perspective, and I have to say that for me who lives now in Vienna, uh, it was a surprise that certain definitions were used like non-Western uh, uh, immigration, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Here you saw, uh, the, you know, there was a really a definite uh, distinction of uh, uh, which migrants, uh, which part of the world they come from, et cetera, et cetera. So I was thinking of that basically. Uh, uh, yeah, Ivan, maybe uh, it's, it's difficult to, I mean, that would be my personal opinion, and, and it's not really interesting to, to tell what my opinion about uh, this party and, and their racism, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe Ira, uh, Ira can tell I haven't I haven't studied, you know, the concept of racism within different political parties in Finland, so I, I wouldn't like to go there, but what I, I, I think I could say is that I think the Finns have mainstreamed uh, in many ways, their uh, pol politics over the yeah. past 10 years. I mean, they used to be like a real uh, kind of alternative and like a real kick into the, you know, the Finnish political scene uh, in the early 2010s. But but they have become more mainstream in many issues uh, over the years already. And and when it comes to uh, foreign and security policy, I think this is uh, one good example where they have kind of mainstreamed. And uh, I remember I did my PhD on uh, the rhetoric of NATO in Finland. And um, I looked into the uh, Finns as well, uh, the Finn part, Finns party in that. And their views on NATO, for instance, uh, became more open over the uh, 20 year period so so I think that's one good example and and obviously they uh, made it to the government coalition in the 2010s and that always kind of mainstreams politics as well so I think it will be very interesting to see if they if they win the elections or if they're the, the first runner-up for instance uh, and they make it to the government that how their politics will will change and continue to evolve as well Thank you. Ivan, I'm sure you have questions. Ivan? Uh, yes, thank you. I, uh, a question on Sanna Marin, and uh, there you mentioned uh, stardom uh, at the beginning. Does the uh, stardom of Sanna Marin internationally, if she's really become a, a figure in international politics and, and media, does that have any effect on her standing domestically? Yeah, well, well, yes, and I think I have heard like people from national who support national uh, coalition party. They have said that Sanna Marin would be a great president of Finland uh, because uh, uh, people are like pr proud of her. She's great, uh, uh, and on, uh, to, I mean, uh, she's really shining and. Uh, People are kind of like proud of her, <laughs> also. But it's also really it's a really difficult situation for journalists that uh, we have a prime minister who is a superstar because usually this is not very hierarchical society and it's really really easy to reach uh, prime ministers and criticize them and talk to them. So now there is it's more distant and uh, uh, for journalism and uh, uh, critical journalism it's. It's a little bit more difficult situation than it used to be. You mean you cannot criticize her because she's a star? <laughs> no, of course we can. But for example, she's not that easy to reach because uh, she doesn't give so many interviews than uh, for us than uh, other prime ministers did. Uh, and and these kind of practical practical things. Uh, I see. Uh, here we have a question from uh, Stefan Bospernik uh, uh, from the Austrian uh, Press Agency. 
Finland, Finland was the first uh, country to push for NATO membership and Sweden followed suit so both countries could join together. Now there is the impression that Finland has abandoned Sweden to make it into the club as soon as possible. Is there any discussion in Finland about that, Iro? Well, I wouldn't say that we have abandoned Sweden. You know, Finland hasn't abandoned Sweden. And I think the first thing, if Finland makes it to the alliance before Sweden, the first really thing for us to do is to make sure that Sweden comes along as soon as possible. Um, but I think over the course of the year, when we submitted those applications at the same time, uh, and we really had those trilateral meetings with Turkey and negotiations, and it seemed that they kind of went moving forward. And and then uh, I think there was a kind of realization, maybe on both parts from Sweden and Finland, that um, you know we've done everything that we can. So it's really up to uh, those remaining nations, Hungary and Turkey, to vote now. And um, I think that in ideal world, Finland and Sweden would have joined at the same time, and that's what Finland also wanted the most, and so did Sweden. And, and unfortunately, it seems that things are not going exactly according to the script like we planned it in our heads. Um, but we do hope that uh, Sweden will come as soon as, po as possible. And I think it will benefit, um, you know, not only obviously Sweden, but also Finland and also NATO and all the transatlantic community at large, because by doing so, when we have those two countries joining in, uh, that will enable us to do even better defense planning and, you know, capabilities, you know, develop those capabilities in our region and in NATO at large. And when it always comes uh, or it boils down to is these assets and resources, you know, uh, that we have at use. And um, I'm sure uh, even Turkey and Hungary, uh, who are now Hungary, just ratified, will be happy to see that we are actually contributing to the collective defense. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm afraid uh, our time is uh, up. I want to thank Vera. I want to thank Iro. I already have questions from some colleagues for contacts with you. So I assume I can uh, give them. So colleagues who want to uh, have uh, uh, further uh, con uh, contact and interview. And uh, I hope we have provided the context. Uh, some things were surprising, some things were not surprising. And uh, let us see what uh, happens on Sunday. And uh, I uh, wish everyone uh, <laughs> the best. Uh, Ivan, would you like to add something? Yes, uh, that uh, th thanking our speakers, but also to mention that along with Finland, uh, we have two other elections in Europe, in Bulgaria and in Montenegro, that are both uh, very important for different reasons. So uh, let, let's focus on, on all of three of them. But I think this was really a very informative and substantive discussion. Thank you to all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, so Daniela. Much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. This was very interesting for me as well. Thank you for. Yes, it's a different angle. Uh, one thing is when you see it from with uh, from inside, and the other thing uh, is when you see it from the outside. And I have to say that one topic that came to my mind for the future is having women as political leaders, but not necessarily focusing on women's politics. I think that's also very, uh, that's, a, that's one of my takeaways. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.